Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If you speak in tongues, that doesn't make you more spiritual than anybody else. And if you don't speak in tongues, that does not mean that there's something wrong with you. Well, welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. I really hope, pray, and believe that you will enjoy the program today. For the last four days, I've been teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And I tell you truthfully, this was a step of faith for me to do because I know that we have people from all kinds of denominational and religious backgrounds that watch our program. And some of you have not been taught anything about the gifts of the Spirit. Matter of fact, some of you may have even been taught that they are no longer relevant today, that they went away when the early church was birthed. However, I think that I could prove by Scripture that that is not accurate. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul talked about the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 13, he talked about love. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, he actually started giving instructions about how these gifts should function in the church. And there's actually something in 1 Corinthians 13 that people use when they say that the gifts went away with the early church. And it's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 13 that says, when the perfect comes, then we will no longer need knowledge and tongues and names a couple of things. Well, knowledge hasn't gone away, and the perfect hasn't come yet because the only thing that's really perfect is Jesus and So when he comes back, the Bible says we will know even as we are known, and so we won't need those gifts in heaven. But for right now, I think it would be very difficult for anybody to prove scripturally that those gifts don't exist today, or at least they should exist, because Paul talks to the church a lot about how to use them properly and not be excessive with them and considering the gift of tongues, which we're going to talk about today, Paul said, don't forbid anyone to speak in tongues, and he gave a lot of instruction about that. Now, the next gift on the list of the gifts of the Spirit, if I were going to do them in order, would be the discerning of spirits. And I am going to do that one last, but I told you yesterday that I was going to talk to you today about the gift of speaking in tongues, and so I want to go ahead and do that. 1 Corinthians 12.10. To another, he's talking about how God gives these gifts of the Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits, which is uh, discerning of spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, Paul is talking to the church, and he said, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. So when you pray in tongues, or pray in the Spirit, as some people talk about it, you're talking directly to God, but in a language that you do not understand. And here again, I know that for some people this may be difficult, but I've spoken in tongues for 45 years. I know hundreds and thousands of people that do, and so we can't all be crazy. There is a gift of the Spirit called speaking in tongues. When you speak in a tongue, you don't speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them because they utter mysteries of the Spirit. In the book of Jude, it says when you pray in tongues, you edify yourself and build yourself up in faith. So I love that. I love to just walk around my house and pray in tongues. The Bible says that we are to also pray that we might interpret. And Paul said he prayed with his spirit and he prayed with his understanding. He sang with his spirit and he sang with his understanding. 
he talked about these gifts. Mark 16, 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. That's another thing we don't talk about today, but Jesus said that we would have the power to cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Now, I personally don't think that that necessarily means that everyone who is a believer in Christ will cast out demons and speak with tongues, but I think that we might say that for those who believe that they will, they will. These things don't automatically happen. We need to have faith. Paul encouraged us, and I'm encouraging you, that we were to seek these gifts, seek them eagerly. One translation of the Bible says to, to covet them, really, really want the gifts of the Spirit. So I'm encouraging you, if you don't do this, to begin to pray that God would use you in the gifts of the Spirit. I've talked about these gifts all week. I know that you can go back and get old programs if you weren't able to see these. I think you can back up online and, and get some of the old programs. In Acts 2-4, after Jesus had been resurrected, after he had taken his blood into heaven and put it on the mercy seat, and he came back for a period of time to be seen by his disciples. He said that they were to go and wait in the upper room until they received the promise of the Father. And that promise was sending the Holy Spirit. 120 people went into this upper room and they stayed there and prayed until the power from on high came. And wow, it must have been quite an event. They were all filled with the Spirit, and they all spoke in tongues. And they said that they went out into the streets, and it was 10 o'clock in the morning, and people thought that they were drunk, so they must have been acting a little bit unusual. We've been talking about how we don't have to live just a natural life, but we can live a supernatural life life. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, tongues may be a language that is known somewhere, maybe not known to you, but known somewhere. And on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Spirit and spoke in tongues, they were speaking languages that other people there understood. There were many different nationalities that gathered in that area. And so people were amazed because they would hear someone that they knew did not know their language speaking in their language and perhaps even telling them secrets about themselves, things that no one else knew. So you can be speaking in a known tongue, but the Bible also talks about the tongues of angels. Now, we don't really understand what that is, but I believe that that's a language that is not a language spoken on earth. It is a heavenly language. And I frankly think that that's probably what a lot of us pray in. 1 Corinthians 13, 1, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I don't have any love, all I am is a big noise or a clanging cymbal. So it's very important to understand that love is the greatest thing that we are to seek. And if we're walking in love, we will exercise these gifts pro properly and not hurt anybody with them or confuse anybody with them. And as I said before, people who want to say that the gifts went away with the early church, all you need to do is read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, and it's going to be very hard to back that up because why in the world would Paul give instructions to the church about how to function in these gifts if they were gone or even for that matter if they were going to go away in a short period of time? He wouldn't have bothered to do that. 1 Corinthians 14, 39, Paul said, So my brothers, brothers, 
earnestly desire to prophesy, and, and listen to this, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. Now, there it is. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. In another place, Paul said, I wish all of you spoke in tongues as often as I do. So Paul spoke in tongues. He spoke in tongues often. And I know again, some of you are thinking, what in the world are you talking about? Well, tongues is the language that comes up out of your spirit. It's not something you learned. When you're filled with the spirit, you will begin to find little syllables that you're not familiar with rising up out of your spirit. And if you are bold enough, you can open your mouth and begin to speak these syllables and the power of the God, the power of God will fill you and you can speak with other tongues. And it's under your control. I can speak in tongues anytime I want to. I can stop anytime I want to. So it's not something that you can't control or that just comes over you and you can't help yourself. Now, does everyone receive the gift of speaking in tongues? I know, of course, this has been a big debate. So let me say this. I believe that there are two different types of tongues. I believe that there's tongues that are one of the gifts of the Spirit that manifested in a church service. And I think that our church services should have gifts of the Spirit. There should be a place for these gifts to function. Some churches there are, some there are not. And I do not think that everybody has that gift of speaking in tongues. That's a different gift than the gift of speaking in tongues as your own private prayer language. So that's what I think most people function in is their own private prayer language. They're given this ability to speak in tongues and they're not speaking to people, they're speaking to God, secrets and mysteries unto God, and they're edifying themselves. In Romans 8, it says that when we don't know how to pray as we ought to, the Spirit prays through us, us with groanings that cannot be uttered. How many times do we not know how to pray? We don't know how to pray for something or about something. And I thank God for the gift of being able to speak in other tongues. I don't know what I'm saying, but God knows what I'm saying. And I feel edified. I feel encouraged. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Now, this is where people get that these gifts went away. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Well, we have more knowledge today on the earth than we've ever had at any other time in history, so knowledge certainly didn't pass away. When the perfect comes, and the perfect has not come yet. We know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, or some translations say the perfect, these things that are in part will disappear. Well, I don't know about you, but I need all the supernatural help that I can get. And I want every gift that the Holy Spirit is willing to give me because I don't want to just operate with no power. I want to have supernatural power and a supernatural life. I want to see miracles and healings and the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the gift of faith and prophecy and speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues, the discerning of spirit. I want all these gifts. No gift has caused as much division in the church as the gift of speaking in tongues. And that's simply because we cannot understand it with our mind. Paul said when you speak in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. You don't, your head cannot understand it. It goes beyond what you can understand. And if we ever want to have the fullness of God in our lives, we have to be willing to not have to understand everything. There's a language of the Spirit that we can pray in that is very valuable. When I speak in tongues, I don't understand what I'm saying, but I know that I'm 
speaking things to God, secrets and mysteries unto God, and I know that it helps me and it edifies me. I do also pray, Paul said, pray that you might interpret, and so I pray that I might interpret, and I think that after I've prayed in the Spirit, there are many times that when I'm talking to someone, or especially when I'm preaching, that I do interpret what I have said without really knowing exactly what I'm doing. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do, Paul says? I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit and I will sing also with my understanding. Well, how can you receive this gift? You ask God for it. You offer your voice to God. And as you sense these little unknown, strange syllables coming into your spirit, you speak them out boldly. Trust God. Do not get frustrated if you don't receive right away. And let me say this to be sure that nobody is confused. If you speak in tongues, that doesn't make you more spiritual than anybody else. And if you don't speak in tongues, that does not mean that there's something wrong with you. That's one of the reasons why people have had problems with this gift, because sometimes people make more out of it than what they ought to. Always keep your focus on God, the giver of the gifts, rather than the gifts themselves. Now, Paul also says that we should pray that we might interpret tongues, and interpretation is not translation. So when I go out to a foreign country and I have an interpreter, they have to say in their language exactly what I have said in my language. But that's different. That's a translation. But Paul says, pray that you might have the interpretation of the tongue that you use. And so that's different. That means I might pray two or three sentences in tongues, and it might take five minutes for it to be said in English. So pray that you might interpret. Pray that God will give you understanding of what you have said. Now, the last gift of the Spirit that we will talk about is the gift of the discerning of spirits. And I have to tell you that it is actually one of my very favorite gifts. I think, boy, do we need discernment today, because there is a lot of deception in the world there's a lot of false prophets. There's a lot of false evil spirits. And we need, 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 need to be able to recognize those. So I do pray on a regular basis for the discerning of spirits. Discernment means to distinguish or to separate out so as to investigate by looking throughout to determine or to decide. There is a scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 that I believe explains this quite well. It says, the natural non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and the teachings and the revelations of God, for they are nonsense to him. He does not understand them. But the spiritual man, I've lost my place here, but the spiritual, but they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. The spiritual man tries all things. He examines, investigates, inquires into, questions, and discerns all things. It is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything, but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. A truly spiritual man sometimes is a little bit hard to figure out. Now, one time I had somebody helping me with my taxes, and of course, Dave and I have tithed for a long time and given money to the church and given money to the ministries, and I remember this man telling me that I was giving too much money to the church. Well, see, he was a non-spiritual man. He didn't understand what I was doing. I understood it because I believed the Word of God. So the things that I've been talking about the last five days have to be spiritually discerned. 
And I certainly don't want to leave you confused. That's why I've waited so long to teach on these gifts. We're going to offer you a, a book that will share more with you at the end of the program. I want you to study. I want you to study what the Word of God has to say about this. But remember, you can't understand this with your head. It can only be discerned with your spirit. As I said, I think discernment is one of the most important gifts, and I really encourage you to pray for it on a regular basis. The Bible says that we are to test and to try the spirits to see if they are real. John 7:24 says, stop judging things by mere appearances, but instead judge them correctly. 1 Thessalonians 5:21, test them. Hold on to what is good. In other words, you may be around somebody and they may, there may be no reason at all why you feel uncomfortable that you, no reason you know, but yet you're just not comfortable with that person. I had somebody tell me the other day, I don't know what it is, can't explain it, but I'm just not comfortable around this person. Well, you're spiritually discerning something that you may never know the reason for, but it's wise to follow that discernment. Pray that God would give you discernment and be very cautious when you get that. Don't judge people and don't start telling people, oh, there must be something wrong with this person because I don't feel comfortable around them. Just let it be a caution to you from God and you just watch and wait and see what he does. So here we have all these gifts of the Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healings, miracles, prophecies, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, the discerning of spirits. Why would we not want to have everything that God wants us to have? I do, and I hope and pray that you do. I believe that you do. I've tried to explain this to the best of my ability. I hope I've done a good job. I've certainly prayed to do a good job. And I know that even with that, some of you probably still don't have any idea what I'm talking about. But I've introduced you to something that you can now begin to pray about and study your Bible. And let me just tell you, don't ever throw anything away that's in the Bible just because you don't understand it. Ask God to give you understanding. Ask him to guide you to the right books where you can get more teaching on this subject. Don't just throw something away because you don't understand it. One of the reasons why people that are against praying in tongues are so against it is because they don't understand it or they don't have it. So they assume that people who do, that there's something wrong with them. Now, I want to pray today, before we close, I want to pray for all of you to be filled with or baptized with the Holy Spirit. And of course, you know, if you don't want to receive my prayer, then you don't have to receive it. But if you have a desire to know more about these supernatural gifts of the Spirit, and you want to be filled with the Spirit, even if you have been filled with the Spirit, I pray all the time to be filled with the Spirit. I think we need to be filled and refilled all the time. So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, I pray that people that are hungry for more of you and hungry for supernatural endowments of energy to come into their life, I pray that right now you would touch them and they would be filled throughout their being with the Holy Spirit and that you would give them various gifts and that you would give them a prayer language that they can pray in where they're talking directly to you and not to men. I pray, Lord, that nobody will be confused and even if they don't fully understand what I've said, that they still won't be confused, but they'll pray and trust you to give them more understanding. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. And I want you to know that here at Joyce Meyer Ministries, we love you, we care about you, 
and we want you to have all that God offers you. We want you to have all that is available to you. We want you to have all of the power that you can possibly have. And the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. And I believe we all want that. So seek love above everything else, but begin to ask God to give you and use you in the gifts of the Spirit so you can not just have a natural life, but a supernatural life. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard. And unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa, in this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of, as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were scared for the kids. It's heartbreaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes. They did. What we never you... found them. Before we open up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. They are good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice to haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our classrooms of hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe, classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Well, here at the ministry, we strive to help people both here in the U.S. and around the world. We do that by providing help such as the gospel, medical care, clean water, feeding programs. It's like being part of one big family, and today I'm inviting you to join the family. If you're not a partner with Joyce Meyer Ministries, we would so appreciate your commitment to become one. We don't ask for or require any certain amount of money. All that we ask you to do is pray, and then do what you believe that God has asked you to do, and to do it consistently. It's the consistency that is really important to us because we're consistently on television daily around the world and so we need consistent partners that are going to stick with us and not only will you be helping preach the gospel through television but all these many many thousands upon thousands of outreaches people being fed and clean water being provided and medical care and putting books into prisons and all the things that Jesus tells us not to forget to do and so I believe that you will pray and that if God puts it on your heart to join the family, I believe that you will. So thank you for your consideration. God bless you.